we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org, and I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Frick. This is Silicon Angle's The Cube, where we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we bring you the best guests that we can find. Marina Levinson is here. She's a former CIO, and she's the founder uh, and CEO of the CIO Advisory Group, a strategic consultancy that advises CIOs. She's, she's here uh, helping out with the uh, CIO Decisions sub-conference, which is at the Knowledge event. Marina, welcome to theCUBE. Well, thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, so this is a great event. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we understand there's a, uh, a sort of an event within the event. Uh, we haven't really talked about uh, that much today. So, so first of all, tell us a little bit about your organization. Yep. Uh, you're, a, you're a longtime CIO, former CIO of, of NetApp. And Palm uh, and, before and, that. And, and, and mm -hmm. Palm before that. Uh, and so you've worked at some very large companies, mm -hmm. large growing companies. Yes. And, um, so tell us about yourself and about your organization. Sure, so I've been in the IT industry, not to age myself, over 25 years. And as you mentioned, worked in a fairly large uh, technology companies, 3Com, uh, Palm, NetApp, uh, was a CIO for more than 12 years. And then at the end of 2011, um, I left corporate world and started my own uh, company called CIO Advisory Group. And really the objective is to work with uh, corporate clients as well as private equity and uh, venture capital and help them understand how to properly position their product offerings in the enterprise IT space specifically how to effectively sell to CIOs and senior IT decision makers. So taking all the experience that I had when I was in the captain's seat right. and uh, actually coaching and teaching uh, how to do it properly and uh, kind of the reverse role that I'm playing right now. This is, this is going to be an excellent segment, so you're going to get some free advice here if you're willing to at least you know, share with our I give my audience. advice freely. Because <laughs> 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 there's no shortage of demand. Uh, but, uh, but if you Didn't really want free advice, but <laughs> given really, freely. If you, if you really want to get behind the velvet curtain, you're going to have to you yeah, know, okay. check out uh, Marina's website. But so, uh, before we get into some of the things that you're doing with, with ServiceNow and some of your clients, uh, let's talk about the, the CIO Decisions Conference. What's yep. that all about here? What's, what, I know you were hosting a panel, but yep. can you share with our audience what, uh, what went uh, on there today? Absolutely. It's really uh, more of an executive track within the uh, Knowledge 13 event and we invited um, uh, senior leaders, uh, senior directors, VP, CIOs, to attend that decision, um, CIO decisions, 13 track. Very much focused on not just service now, but what's happening in the industry as a whole. What are the trends? Uh, what are the opportunities to innovate for IT? Uh, we had a great representation from VCs, uh, Sequoia Capital uh, partners were here. They did a great job uh, talking about what they're investing in, generated a lot of interest on the part of CIOs and other senior IT decision makers. Um, I personally uh, facilitated a panel on IT innovation and how the role of IT and CIO is changing right now and what CIOs need to be to be successful um, in this new world of uh, mobile, social, cloud, SaaS, big data. Yeah, so um, as a, a, a long time CIO, you've seen the technologies. Technologies come, technologies go. That's right. There's always going to be a new technology uh, around the corner. CIOs always tell me, look, it's about people, the process, yeah, and the technology. And the technology. But, but the people in the process are the, the hardest part. Uh, having said that, technology is the fun part. <laughs> it's the part that it gets the headlines. And, and I think it's different uh, right now. There are two big differences I see. First of all, the rate of technology, new technologies that are being delivered in the marketplace is just unprecedented. And Sequoia Capital talked about that. Uh, the barrier to entry for startups to deliver product to the marketplace has been reduced by 90%. Mm. So we get a lot of technology moving in our direction. Secondly, if you look at uh, CIO profile, let's say even five years ago, um, CIOs tend to be the only buyers of information technology, maybe with an exception of engineering. But they were key decision makers in all matters related to selecting, purchasing, implementing technology. That has drastically changed in the last five years, thanks to um, SaaS, thanks to cloud, and you see executives from line of business, whether it's sales, whether it's marketing, whether it's HR, actually 
uh, venturing into the new brave world of technology and buying that technology and bringing it into the organization. It is unsettling for some CIOs, uh, but I think it's actually a positive trend uh, because it really brings into the technology umbrella not just the IT folks, but a lot of people from the business are very interested in the new capabilities that this technology can deliver. So what I advise CIOs that this is really an opportunity. It's really not uh, uh, bad news for CIOs that they lost that type of control in terms of the purse strings. And um, uh, enterprises will win if the line of business and CIOs will partner very tightly together and start delivering capabilities with agility of SaaS and cloud, but also with some overseeing from CIOs to ensure that security, privacy, uh, integration, architecture uh, is taken care of. So you are seeing a lot of disruption. I mean, probably as much as, as we've ever seen in this business. I mean, Absolutely. You've got, you've got mobile, you've got the hyperscale guys completely, Amazon's completely changing retail. That's right. You've got, you know, financial services is, is, is it's getting exciting. overturned. It's very exciting. It's exciting. Uh, so what are some of the big mega trends that you're tracking for your clients? Uh, so SaaS and cloud is really no longer emerging trends as far as I'm concerned. They're here. Um, I was actually very impressed to see how many people attended ServiceNow conference. So a little bit trivia and my linkage to ServiceNow when I was at NetApp, uh, CIO of NetApp, I selected ServiceNow in 2010. We implemented ServiceNow in early 2011. Very successful implementation. Um, short, sweet, uh, it's being used right now, not just in IT, but it's being used in HR and real estate at NetApp, so very successful implementation. Uh, and uh, I see that uh, SaaS is no longer emerging. It's almost like if you are not investing in Salesforce, ServiceNow, uh, Workday uh, and other emerging SaaS uh, products and solutions, you're kind of falling behind uh, from the strategy perspective. So cloud and SaaS are here to stay. Mobile, with consumerization of IT, with everyone carrying their own devices, uh, bring your own device to work is no longer an option. Mobility is here and IT will have to respond. Uh, some of the leaders responding and creating a structure for bring your own device to work. Others just basically ignoring it and thinking it doesn't exist. <laughs> but um, uh, mobility is a huge avalanche of um, uh, technology that's coming our way. And let me tell you, I, I was an early adopter of mobile technologies. I was the first CIO at Palm, at Palm in yeah. early days, late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, we clearly were ahead of our time, but we did a lot of very innovative uh, work with mobile technologies that now being uh, deployed as a mainstream uh, because of iOS and Android, um, you know, really, um, penetrating the, the market. So having spent so much time in the heart of Silicon Valley yeah. and just seeing all these disruptions in innovation, what do you think CIOs can learn from, say, these web, web giants, like what I call the hyperscale guys, Google's, yeah. Facebook's, Amazon's, what can they learn from them and what should they be careful about trying to mimic them? Um, it's a very interesting question. So if you look at the business model of Google's and Facebook's and Yahoo's, these guys invest a lot in engineering. Very few companies can invest and engineer solutions that they did, either at Amazon or at Google. So uh, your typical enterprise probably will not have the capabilities to develop the technology. They will have to select uh, a third party provider, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Google or someone else, to actually deliver those services to them. Uh, what they can learn is clearly that innovation is endless. Uh, it's amazing what Google is doing, and some of it might not even be applicable to enterprise IT, but I, when I look at this um, Google Glass or self-driving car, I get excited just because it's so innovative, and we ha we're fortunate in the United States to have a company like that mm -hmm. that has the resources to invest in those type of innovations. But this is kind of 30 feet view. 
um, and um, IT people usually are uh, more down to earth. But for them, again, looking into investing in cloud and SaaS, investing in mobile, is definitely um, something that they need to be looking at. Big data, very appropriate for some industries, but I think it's still there is a lot of hype around big data. That's still very much of an emerging trend. So it's interesting what you're saying about, and you're right on, I think, that the, the large enterprises, except maybe some of the largest financial services companies, really just don't have the, the engineering resources to, to mimic what the Googles and the Facebooks are doing, and maybe even those guys don't. So you've, you've got to rely on an ecosystem of partners, and, and, and I see ServiceNow as, yeah. as playing that type of, of role. Being Absolutely. able to, Frank talks about automation a, as opposed to just sort of managing humans. Yeah. And, and so it seems like that's a new wave within enterprise IT, whether it's companies like your former company yeah. or you know, IBM, HP, ServiceNow, bringing in a layer that can that can deliver those engineering resources yeah. and help you drive you know, new efficiencies and automation in your business. And what's exciting is uh, IT could actually focus on business capabilities. They don't need to worry anymore about infrastructure and designing, architecting, and running infrastructure within their four walls. They can actually, by leveraging SaaS and cloud, have that done by third party providers and IT can really focus on um, building relationships with the business partners, understanding what their business clients want from business capabilities, and focus on delivering that. And um, uh, actually, uh, the cycle time is dramatically shorter. Uh, when I was growing up as a CIO, um, we always said, well, a uh, project shouldn't take more than a year. And then we said, project shouldn't take more than six. Seriously, yeah, no, I know I'm showing no. my age. Well, but you worked that's for Wormenhoven, right, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no. Georgians, I know Tom. <laughs> Short ROI. Short ROI, <laughs> and now, I mean, three months is kind of a long time <laughs> a long because time. with this DevOps, uh, new uh, yeah. trend of DevOps, you can actually deliver capabilities on a daily basis, and that's what Facebook is doing. Uh, clearly, I think IT people need to be smart about how they deliver innovation. Uh, what I said during my panel uh, with CIOs when they asked me how do you drive innovation into the organization, I told them please don't select your most mission critical revenue generating system and try experiment with that. Um, otherwise you will be probably looking for a different type of badge <laughs> very, very soon. But select something that is meaningful to your customers, but it's not going to kill the company. And start small, deliver fast, um, succeed fast or fail fast, and then move on. So, so talk a little bit about how kind of the shadow IT yep. and these alternate yep. IT resources that are available with a credit card and, and a login yep. have really impacted the CIO and their teams um, kind of shift the focus that we really need to serve our customers as customers because mm -hmm. we actually are competing with with other companies that treat them as customers. They're not mm -hmm. a captive audience anymore yep. and they will not wait for six months to provision a new Absolutely. server for a development project. Absolutely, and I think if you look at what are the reasons why shadow IT organizations have been created, they were born out of frustration that IT couldn't deliver what the business wanted to implement from the business capabilities perspective. Uh, and now that Shadow IT is there, uh, I think uh, it's a smart thing for CIOs to do and IT to do to partner with them and again help them, enable them versus saying no. Mm -hmm. um, the marketing message of service now, the end of no, and the beginning of now is actually a fantastic line, yeah. and it can be applied to much more than just uh, uh, service now. Um, it's truly an ability, SaaS and cloud gives uh, IT an ability to deliver faster and say yes to many more things right, than right. historically they were able to do. So what are your thoughts on, I mean, you're, you're here at the conference, you're helping out with their you know, the panel at the decisions conference. What do you tell CIOs, do you sort of, You've got a strong personality and you're oh, you're, no, you're, no, I'm, uh, you're forceful you noticed. and yeah, it's good. <laughs> you I mean, so if, you, if I were CIO at the end of the table, I'd say, oh, I'm going to listen to this lady. So it sounds like she knows what or she's else. talking about. <laughs> right, or, or else. else. <laughs> right, or else. So 
What do you, what's your advice? Are you telling them, look, stop with the non-differentiated heavy lifting. This is a no-brainer. Put this in and move on. Or is it, are you more selective with your advice? Uh, I am pretty strong when it comes to giving advice to CIOs because I truly believe that we are in the time of change and uh, there are two types of CIOs. Uh, first type, is really very comfortable in running everything on premise, being in total control, just basically running the business and kind of holding on for their dear life <laughs> and trying to you know, uh, put their head in the sand and forget that things are happening around them. And I think these people will probably die out. Yeah, uh, dinosaurs like dinosaurs, oil, right? exactly, Eventually exactly. We'll and then there are some <laughs> other, um, uh, CIOs that actually embracing change and that they're driving innovation into their respective companies. Um, I work a lot with CIOs like that. I um, actually build and lead advisory, CIO advisory boards for companies and I try to attract uh, CIOs that are thought leaders, that are not maintainers, uh, people that actually are builders and they're not afraid to work with startups and then they're not afraid to take risk as, and as a result, they demonstrate courage, but they also deliver terrific benefits to their respective companies. Okay, so as, as specifically as it relates to something like the ServiceNow yep. platform, will you uh, advise people to consider something like that, or, or are you? No doubt, uh, and so, so you're, absolutely. You're, you're very clear in your recommendations And there. I put my money where my mouth is because I selected ServiceNow uh, in 2010. We deployed it in 2011. I actually have my former NetApp folks that I'm going to have drinks afterwards. <laughs> and it's been a very good experience for us. Um, uh, it, uh, if I can just name names, uh, or maybe I shouldn't be naming names, we had a you legacy like system. Uh, we had a legacy system, there are very few options, but so you can guess. And we were forced uh, with a decision of upgrading that legacy system. And what I asked my team to do is to compare the cost of the upgrade of that legacy system with uh, green field implementation of ServiceNow. And when we purely looked at the numbers, forget about the capabilities that are significantly better, just purely looking at the numbers, it was, either a wash or a little bit better uh, ServiceNow wins. Uh, so for us, it was a no-brainer, uh, and my advice to CIOs, if you have um, this choice that you need to make in terms of upgrading your legacy, to me, there is no choice. ServiceNow so is the only uh, game in town for IT service management. What did you do with the old stuff? Is that you know, there's always that we have to save the old stuff. We have to save the old stuff. You know, we need to we need to migrate the data. We need to migrate the processes. I mean, uh, we at NetApp say, didn't hey, have an issue, and uh, maybe uh, if you purchase something, uh, uh, you know, uh, six months ago, you have you you are faced with writing off assets. We didn't have that issue. We had an asset that was fully depreciated, and we needed to pay to upgrade. So it was a very easy choice. Uh, clearly, if you have to write off millions and millions of dollars, you have to work with your uh, accounting partners to make sure you don't screw this you know, up. I more like just the data and the history. I was involved in a project where they were migrating yeah. from legacy to some yeah. new stuff, and it was religious yeah, rewards. Nobody ever wants to migrate, religious right? Religious rewards to migrate, and it's yeah. like, just keep it in read-only mode for a while, yeah, That's and, what and we before did. you know it, that's you won't what be we reading did. it anymore. That's what we did. We selectively <laughs> converted. Uh, obviously, all the open right, uh, items right. were converted, but we didn't take all the history. Right. Uh, because the company was growing so fast, some of the history was not really relevant, and we were building new capabilities using ServiceNow, so it was easy for us to say, we're going to leave that behind as a read-only. And yeah. I think that was a good decision. Well, NetApp's a pretty forward-thinking company. I mean, they're very yes, open-minded. absolutely. It's a young-minded company. Uh, so. Yeah, at NetApp, 25-30% uh, now, probably even more, uh, of my assets were SaaS and cloud, uh, because we believed in uh, that uh, approach and that architecture. Right. All right, Marina, well listen, I uh, really appreciate you coming on, great advice. Uh, how do Thank people get in touch me. with you uh, if they want to get some, uh, go deeper? It's, it's CIO Advisory Group. Yeah, uh, send me a message, uh, marina at cioadvisorygroup.com. CIO Advisory Group is one word. And um, I check my uh, email messages more often than I probably should. You, <laughs> so I still have my uh, <laughs> enterprise <laughs> IT genes in me. And it's a <laughs> Though great I don't sleep with my uh, mobile phone anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
The only have to reason go. I do is because it's my alarm. Otherwise, <laughs> I wouldn't. Um, and and uh, you've got a great list of stuff that you do here on your website, M&A, IT strategy, you know, cloud strategy, SaaS deployment, CIO advisory board creation, and lead it. That's, a, that's a great you know, uh, benefit for a lot of the, the vendors. Oh, companies, oh, I have yeah. to ask you, yep. I have to ask you before yep. we go. Yep. What, uh, uh, talk to the vendor community out there for yes. a minute. What drives you crazy about the vendor community? What advice would you give to vendors? If they want to market and sell to CIOs, what, what shouldn't they do and what should yeah. they do? Um, actually, I actually uh, provide some coaching to uh, sales organizations during their kickoffs uh, because certainly you can imagine in 25 years and 12 being a CIO, I was sold to by absolutely everyone, um, big and small, and uh, I have a list of funny stories that we're not going to tell <laughs> today, but believe me, there it's are some segment. shocking stories. Good seats at the Giants exactly. game, anytime you want them. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, uh, one thing that technology vendors should do better is to really understand what business problems they need to solve for that particular individual. If you get an audience with a CIO, you usually have 20 minutes to impress that person, and if you're not prepared, if you come with a question, um, my favorite, uh, asking a CIO, so tell us what is it that you need or what your problems are, to me. Stupidest question in sales. Uh, <laughs> one of the stupidest, <laughs> probably not the stupidest, <laughs> but uh, pretty close. So being prepared, learning, and making sure that the vendor solution fits the problem that the company has is just absolutely number one, uh, the law that um, you know, enterprise salespeople need to learn uh, very early on. Be prepared, uh, really focus on making CIO successful. So what I tell people, hopefully this is not too creepy, uh, Google the company, Google the CIO, understand what the CIO is interested in. Is this person comfortable with outsourcing or uncomfortable with outsourcing? Um, do these people, is this, this person um, embracing new technologies or risk averse? And based on that, frankly, just um, have to manage and adopt your pitch to the style of the CIO. Do your homework, don't worry, Do so, your homework. Don't worry so much about your PowerPoints. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> worry more about your customer. Exactly, and really uh, try to figure out how to make the CIO successful. Excellent. With your solutions. Hi right, Marina, well great advice. Really appreciate you coming on theCUBE and spending so much time with us and uh, good luck with your, your, your organization and your initiatives. Thank you very much. It was All a right, pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. All right everybody, keep it right there. We'll be right back pleasure. to Thank wrap you. the day. Day one at ServiceNow Knowledge. We're here at the Aria in okay. Las Vegas. We'll be right back after this short break. All right.